Sharonkov telescopes do not directly detect gamma rays. Instead, they detect Sharonkov radiation, which is caused by the original gamma ray. The gamma ray interacts with the particles in the atmosphere and produces an electron and a positron. A positron is the antiparticle of the electron. It has equal mass and opposite charge to the electron, so it is positively charged. A particle-antiparticle pair can annihilate each other and release radiation. And here, the opposite is happening and we've got radiation producing a particle-antiparticle pair. And the electron and the positron share the energy of the initial gamma ray. So they have a huge amount of kinetic energy and they actually travel through air faster than light can. This doesn't violate Einstein's theory of special relativity, which says that nothing can go faster than the speed of light in a vacuum, no matter what medium it's travelling through. Light travels more slowly through air than it does through a vacuum. So the electron-positron pair can go faster than the speed of light in air. The electron and positron moving through the air faster than light causes the air around them to radiate. And this is much like a sonic boom that you see when an aircraft goes supersonic, or the wake that you see on a boat. As a boat travels through water, it causes waves to radiate from it. If the boat is moving slower than the speed of water waves, then these waves are all separated. But if it moves faster, then the waves build up at the front and are all bunched into a V-shape at the back. Because they can't escape the boat, it's travelling faster than they can. This is the same as what happens in a sonic boom. The pressure waves all bunch together into a cone, which is effectively a 3D V-shape. Analogously, as the charge moves through the air, it causes an electromagnetic disturbance. An electromagnetic wave, this is a wave of light. And if the charge is moving slower than the speed of light, then these waves will cancel each other out. But if it's moving faster, then we see a cone of light just like in the sonic boom. And this is Cherenkov radiation, and it is this light that the telescopes will be detecting. The first electron and positron can emit further gamma rays, which again pair produce to give more electrons and positrons. This process can continue to give increasing numbers of electrons and positrons until there is not enough energy left to generate more. This leads to a particle cascade initiated by the original gamma ray. All of the resulting electrons and positrons that travel faster than the speed of light in air also cause Sharonkov radiation. The higher the energy of the initial gamma ray, the wider the Sharonkov light bulb becomes, and the brighter. And this is because more of the particles have had enough energy to cause Sharonkov radiation. I asked Dr. Richard White to tell me more about Sharonkov telescopes. So for these types of telescope, the most, most important thing is to consider the, the nature of the Sharonkov light and the pool that that forms on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and so it depends really what sort of energy of, of gamma ray you're interested in as to the characteristics of the telescope. Mm -hmm. CTA will be made up of an array of two or three different telescope sizes. The reason for having different sized telescopes is that each one focuses on a different energy range of gamma rays. So at the lowest energy, gamma rays happen quite a lot. Uh, they enter the atmosphere all the time and they create little pools of light. So the shrink of light they produce is a lot smaller than and, and, and lower in intensity than the shrink of light produced from the very high energy gamma rays. So down here to detect these low energy gamma rays, what you're interested in is collecting as much of that light as you can. So you need telescopes that have uh, very large reflectors, uh, 20, 30 meters wide, and they can, they can collect all this light in, in sort of a 5 or 10 nanosecond flash. Um, now, at those energies, as I said, the gamma rays happen quite a lot, so you don't need to cover a large area on the ground, so you need a few telescopes. Mm -hmm. So at this energy, you're looking at sort of four very large reflectors to, to do the correct size. Conversely, at the highest energies, um, gamma rays are a bit more rare, um, but they create a lot of light when they enter the atmosphere. The shrink of light pool can extend out to, to kilometres. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is that uh, there's so much light that you don't need a large reflector, a few metres across rather than 20 or 30 will do the job. And what we find is you're better 
for the science return, building many smaller telescopes and spreading them apart. But also because these things are so rare, they don't happen nearly as often as low energy gamma rays from outer space. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you need to cover a large area underground to increase the chance of seeing one. Yeah. Um, and then in, in the middle, in the middle energy range, you basically do something in between. So you build a medium sized dish. Uh, and you build a medium number of telescopes and spe space them a medium distance apart. Okay. It's also really helpful if more than one telescope detects the same Cherenkov flash of light. And this is because these telescopes can work together to find out exactly where the original gamma ray came from. So considering the nature of Cherenkov light is what allows us to optimise our design of the telescope array to make the best possible instrument.